Hello everyone, welcome to our paper presentation at the Web Conference 2021. My name is Fong, I'm a PhD student at the Max Planck Institute for Informatics in Germany. I'll be presenting our paper Advanced Semantics for Common Sense Knowledge Extraction. This is a joint work with Simon Darnitsky and Gerhard Weiken. In this work, we propose a methodology to automatically extract and consolidate common sense knowledge from web contents. So let's start with some definitions. First of all, what is common sense knowledge? Well, common sense knowledge is knowledge about properties and traits of general concepts like elephants, lawyers, bicycles. Applications of common sense knowledge can be found in many AI-related tasks, such as question answering, dialogue systems, and similar applications. Although it's recently shown that large pre-trained language models like BERT implicitly store some common sense knowledge in their parameters, structured common sense knowledge bases, or CSKBs in short, have some advantages over the language models, that is, they are much more interpretable and scrutable. Existing common sense KBs can be divided into two categories, the manually constructed KBs and the extraction-based KBs. And despite using different construction methods, all those KBs come with some major limitations. First, they are all constrained by a triple data model which has a problem that Triples are often found to be overly specific and wordy. Second, they lack expressiveness for both subject, predicate, and object. For subjects, they mostly focus on single nouns like elephant, trunk, car, and miss out semantic refinements of those subjects, which may have different or even opposite properties. Next, they treat predicates and objects as monolithic strings like in these four assertions, A1, A2, A3, A4. This misses out the equivalence of A1 and A3 or the semantic relation that A2 refines A1. In addition, the spatial and temporal facets in A2 and A4 are mixed into unrelated strings. Finally, regarding quality, some of the major KBs prioritize either precision or recall but hardly reconcile both. So the goals of our work include constructing a KB that reconciles both high precision and high recall. We strive for more expressive representations by refining subjects into subgroups and aspects, capturing semantic facets that qualify the validity of assertions like location or temporal, and capture other dimensions of context such as cause or purpose. So to give you an example of how our data model is different from existing KBs, let me draw a figure here. Here are some assertions about the concept elephant and existing KBs will stop at this stage. In our KB, we introduce semantic facets to the assertions. We also treat subgroups and aspects as subjects and extract assertions for those refined subjects as well. For example, our KB knows elephant sucking water has two purposes, to spray on their bodies and to drink. For refined subjects, the KB knows elephant trunks are used for smelling and so on. And we name our KB ascent. And to achieve the goals, we propose this extraction pipeline. Our pipeline operates in three phases. Retrieval of relevant documents, extraction of common sense knowledge, and finally, knowledge consolidation. In the retrieval phase, we search through the web documents specific to the target subject and automatically filter out out-of-context documents. Then in the extraction phase, we extract from retained text, common sense assertions, and related terms. Finally, in the consolidation phase, we cluster assertions and facets into groups of semantically similar statements. And in the next slide, I'll describe to you every phase in more detail. First, to retrieve documents relevant to a given concept, we use the Bing Search API. To deal with ambiguous terms, we use GoodNet hypernames to define our search queries. For example, if concept S has hypername animal, then its search query will be S animal facts. For the hypernym professional, we produce the search query as job descriptions. And we have manually designed 35 rules for the most common hypernyms, which cover 82% of the primary subjects in our KB. And when no rules can be applied, we simply pick up the nearest hypernyms for this purpose. Then we use a simple method to filter out irrelevant documents by comparing each document with a referenced Wikipedia article and documents ranked lower will be omitted in the later phases. So after collecting relevant documents for the concept, we go into the extraction phase. The core of this phase is the open information extractor, 
which is built upon an approach called Stuffy. Stuffy is basically a series of handcrafted patterns that is capable of extracting open assertions with semantic facets from free text. The facets come from two sources, prepositional phrases and supporting adverbs. For example, uh, given the sentence lions live for 10 to 14 years in the wild, our system extracts the tuple with subject lions, predicate live, object for 10 to 14 years, facet label, location, and facet value in the wild. We use a supervised classifier to label the facets. And finally, in this phase, we use a list of simple handcrafted rules to extract refined subjects, including subgroups and aspects. And so far, we have collected open assertions, but due to the richness of natural language, uh, assertions could have the same meaning even though they are expressed in different words. To avoid these redundancies, it's necessary to identify those assertions and group them together. We perform two levels of clustering, on triple level and on facet level. For triple clustering, we based on the similarity between two triples. First, we filter out low similarity pairs using fast pre-trained go to web embeddings. Next, we compute advanced similarity with a fine-tuned BERT model for the retained pairs. The reason for this is, the BERT model has much more parameters than the go to web model and it is proved to have better representations for natural language, but that also comes with the cost that the computation time for BERT is much longer than for go to web. Finally, the similarities are used by the SAC algorithm, a standard clustering algorithm, to get the triple clusters. And for facet clustering, we go with a simple method. For prepositional facets, we simply group facets with the same headword together. For example, we group during evening and in the evening together. For adverb facets, we use the HAC algorithm again with average go to work embeddings. So that is it for the methodology. In the next session, I'll show you some important results of our experiments. First of all, it is the knowledge base we have created with our pipeline. We executed the pipeline on 10,000 most popular concepts from ConceptNet. We have expanded those concepts to more than 382,000 refined subjects, of which we have more than 8.5 million assertions and more than 4.4 million semantic facets. So to evaluate the quality of assertions, we asked crowd workers from the Amazon Mechanical Turk platform to give scores to the assertions along two dimensions, typicality and saliency, based on a scale from 1 to 5. So typicality states that an assertion host for most instances of a concept. For example, elephants having trunks is typical, but elephants drinking milk is not, because that's only valid for baby elephants. Saliency refers to the human perspective of whether an assertion is associated with a concept by most humans on first thought. For example, elephants having trunk is salient, but elephants killing their trainers is not salient, because it does not happen so frequently. The results show that among automatically built KBs including WebChild, KB, Quasimodo, and Ascent, our KB has the most salient assertions and it still demonstrates competitive quality in terms of typicality. ConceptNet is an outlier here because it is the only one that was built manually. However, because it was built manually, it has much smaller size than our KB or Quasimodo and WebChild, which were built automatically. The Tuple KB, which focuses on special domains like science, also has limited size compared to Ascent. And next, to evaluate the coverage of our KB, we performed the same evaluation scheme conducted in the Quasimodo paper. The evaluation is based on 2,400 human written statements about salient properties of 100 common subjects. We used two automated metrics here, strict and relaxed. So basically, strict means exact matching and relaxed means partial matching between assertions in the KBs and the human written statements. For both metrics, our KB always performs better than the others. And that means our KB covers the statements which humans think are salient better than other KBs. 
And in the next evaluation, we would like to investigate if structured common sense knowledge is useful for an extrinsic use case, the question answering use case. This evaluation is based on a model called BERT, and in case you're not familiar with BERT, let me do a quick recap on what BERT can do. So BERT is a very large neural network model published by people at Google in 2018. Its core architecture called Transformer has become increasingly popular in recent years and has boosted the performance of various natural language tasks. In this evaluation, we used the mass language model, an objective that BERT was trained on. Now what BERT can do is, given a sentence with one token being hidden or masked, and after some complicated computations, BERT gives you predictions to the value of that token. Next, I'll show you how external knowledge, or in our case, knowledge-based statements can influence BERT predictions. So we start with a sentence with one token being hidden as usual. And then we use a retrieval method on a common sense knowledge base to get some assertions relevant to the sentence. Next, we augment the sentence with a retrieve statement and finally ask BERT to predict the mass token. By doing so, BERT will have more context about the question and hopefully it will produce better output than when no context is given. And this idea is motivated by what was presented in this great paper by people at Facebook AI Research. And the dataset we use for this evaluation is the CSLB property norm dataset. It contains short human written sentences about salient properties and traits of general concepts. And after some filtering, we got about 19,000 sentences. We hide the last token of each sentence. These tokens are usually the objects of the sentences. And in terms of metric, we use the mean precision at 5 metric. The results show that all common sense KBs contribute good knowledge to the language model and help it perform statistically better than when no context is given. And our KB ascent performs a little bit better than other KBs in this evaluation, and even better than a text-based dataset, the generics KB. And we have also developed a demo website that allows you to explore and search our knowledge base as well as to experiment with the QA tasks. If you're interested, why don't you take a look at the website? And to conclude, in this paper, we introduce an advanced data model for common sense knowledge base that avoids common limitations of existing works and captures more informative assertions. We propose a methodology for extracting and consolidating common sense knowledge automatically from the web. We show that it's not only feasible, but also the resulting KB comes with high precision and better coverage compared to other automatically built KBs. And in the extrinsic evaluation, we show that the large pre-trained language models can benefit from structured common sense knowledge in QA tasks. And finally, we built a demo so that you can explore our resources. And we hope that this presentation gives you useful information about our work and as the assertion number 6,358,748 in our KB says, great presentations should inspire the audience to learn more. If you want to learn more, please take a look at the paper and the demo, and do not hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you.